Hello, Wonder Hussy here, and welcome to another edition of Ghost Town for Sale. This charming fixer-upper sits right on the California side of the Nevada border, only 45 minutes from Las Vegas, and comes with its very own collection of tumbleweeds, rusted cars, and trailers. Railroad tracks running right through the middle of town allow fast access to shopping, dining, and schools, while an on-site market, hotel, and restaurant provide an excellent opportunity for commercial profit. Now that everyone's working remotely, there's sure to be a ton of interest in this hot property, so call now before it's too late and make an offer on your very own piece of Mojave Desert history. <laughs> That's right, today I'm out in the middle of the Mojave Desert again, uh, going to check out the town of Nipton. Uh, I've been told several times I'd be the ideal candidate to buy a town called Nipton, and well golly, I think they're asking about 2.75 million dollars, so mm, not sure it's in my price range. But I thought it might be fun to go poke around Nipton and see what it has to offer anyway. <laughs> well, that was it. Hope you didn't blink. Just kidding, we're gonna go back in and poke around some more of it. The first thing I wanted to poke around, and the first thing that I noticed that I thought was kind of funny, is this decoy cop car parked on the highway just outside town. <laughs> you know how sometimes in these small desert towns they don't have the budget for a live cop, so they just get an old decommissioned cop car and set it at the side of the road, and then when us big city folk go speeding past and catch a glimpse of it out of the corner of our eye, well, <laughs> we don't uh, see enough of it to know that it's not real, and so we slow down. I think, uh, well, I think you're supposed to slow down to 25 miles an hour going through Nipton because of the railroad tracks, <laughs> but a lot of people probably don't. You can see we're on a real busy highway. If you keep going that way, you end up in Searchlight, Nevada, uh, and if you keep going that way, well, you end up on Interstate 15, just outside the Ivanpah Solar Plant. So it's really a great location in the middle of everything. And you know what they say about real estate. It's location, location, location. I just went and parked right here in front of the general store. There's kind of like a little convenience store, sells a few souvenirs, lottery tickets, because we are in California, right across the Nevada border. And there's no state lottery in Nevada. And like there's not enough opportunities to gamble in Nevada. Well, all the good folk over there love to come over to California to buy lottery tickets. And then there used to be a cafe here and a really cool historic hotel, but I'm pretty sure they're closed. Uh, we'll go check in a minute. But first, here's a little history about the town of Nipton. It says it was founded on February 9th, 1905, with the coming of the first train on the newly constructed San Pedro, Los Angeles, and Salt Lake Railroad, originally called Nipeno Camp, after a nearby gold discovery. The name was changed to Nipton when the SPLA and SL merged with the Union Pacific around 1910. And then it basically just talks about how the railroad going through served the ranchers in the area. There was a bunch of cattle ranchers that used to load their cattle onto the trains to, I guess, take them into the stockyard in Las Vegas. And then there was a, a really famous Hollywood couple, Clara Bow, the actress Clara Bow and Rex Bell. They had a ranch not too far from here called the Walking Box Ranch. So they lived in the area. They probably loaded their cattle onto this train. The miners loaded their ore onto the train. And well, I guess it says there, at one time there was a school, a post office, a voter precinct, and several small businesses. So, well, quite a bit has changed in the intervening years, but hey, guess what? Nipton is still hanging on. Oh, look, speaking of Clara Bow, here's a picture of her. I guess she was considered like the it girl of Hollywood in the 1920s. I mean. Well, look at her, she was beautiful. It says she and her husband, Rex Bell, bought the ranch as a retreat from the pressures of Hollywood. I was actually listening to a podcast about her and I think she actually had a pretty tragic life. I think it was Clara Bow. Like she had this reputation as being like the, well, pardon my language, but like the whore of Hollywood. And she screwed the whole UCLA football team, I wanna say, or USC football team when John Wayne was on it. and. I don't know, she ended up having kind of like a nervous breakdown and having to move out to the desert and 
I think she pretty much just went downhill from there. I gotta go check out that ranch. You can actually tour it, and that's definitely on my list of things to do. But first, back to Nipton. So here's some old-time photos of some of the old-time residents. Oh, look, that's probably the same general store way back in the day. It says it was called Harry Treehorn's Townstead. So there's Harry on the left, or left, and his wife, Ella, at the old Treehorn store in Nipton, California. Boy, I'll bet you anything that is the same exact store that's right over there now. And then the hotel here, you can see there's a picture of that, too. Look at that used to be called the Hotel Nipton, but now they changed it to the Hotel California. What a name. And if there ever was an actual Hotel California, it probably looked a lot like that. Anyway, before we leave this historical sign, uh, another interesting thing on here, it says the town kind of went into decline after that guy, Harry Treherne died. And then the railroad station closed, I guess sometime in the 40s, 50s. And then in 1985, the family that owns it now bought this town and restored it as a destination for tourists and a home for local miners. So, wow, there probably are still miners in this area or old prospectors who live in some of these trailers. And it looks like there might have been even some little apartments and bungalows. So it's not actually a ghost town. It's actually a living town. There's still people here. Okay, so like I said, I parked here in front of the little store and the cafe and, well, kind of by the hotel here. Um... But behind the hotel over on this side, there's something actually really interesting. Now, unfortunately, there's a sign up that says no entry and it's gated off. But we could probably still peek through the fence. Oh, yeah, look, I don't know if you can see. I'll zoom in. There's like some really weird, big, like Burning Man style artworks. Well, that's because the this town has been for sale a few times since I've lived in the area. Uh, and so the last people who bought it, it was this marijuana collective called American Green. And they bought this town planning to t turn it into like a cannabis recreation resort, I guess. So the idea was you would come out here and they had like these really cool teepees and eco cabins that you could rent a place and I guess <laughs> get baked and look at the stars. I mean, at one point they even... I talked to a guy once and he said they were planning to have like an event venue so they'd have like I guess concerts like Snoop Dogg or Cheech and Chong or whoever um so I guess that's why they brought that Burning Man art out here to sort of cater to that crowd and if you ask me that's like a solid dare I say bulletproof business idea I mean we're only 45 minutes from Vegas over here if you had this awesome Hotel California teepees marijuana resort I mean it sounds like shooting fish in a barrel. People would love to come out here and camp out and get high and look at the stars. So I'm not really sure what happened, why that never took off, but, uh, well, it's for sale again. Okay, wow, I just met the guy who's the caretaker here, and he was super cool. And he said, I could walk around anywhere I want and check out this artwork, check out the buildings. He told me a little bit about the history of the town, and, well, he did have some bad news, and that is Nipton is in escrow. Ugh. Sorry guys, I know I started this whole video and framed it as ghost town for sale. And I suppose escrow could still fall through. But he said there was like four or five other interested parties after the uh, the people that are in escrow. So, well, if you want to buy a ghost town, I guess you're SOL on this one. But we can still poke around and see what it has to offer. Okay, here's one of the little eco cabins that you used to be able to rent. Looks like it's just a little one room. Looks like it's got a fireplace and then like an outdoor shower on the side. Oh, how fun. And then over here's where these teepees used to be that you could stay in. Looks like they took the hides off them, I guess for the winter or I don't know, maybe when they sold the place, they took everything that wasn't nailed down. Look at that, here's teepee number two. Oh my gosh, it looks like if you stayed in this teepee, you would have gotten a really cool old timey bed, table, chair, and like a futon <laughs> and then each teepee has its own little fire pit look at that it's one of those washing machine drums that they turn into a fire pit how cozy would it be to stay in a teepee here and have a little campfire <laughs> in a washing machine drum and oh my god the stars out here would be amazing matter of fact i was talking to the caretaker and he was saying he's lived here five years five years and he loves it because the elevation is around three thousand feet so it doesn't get quite as hot as Las Vegas. He said, and then it gets up to like maybe 110, which I know that's hot, but 
<laughs> trust me, where I come from, that's not that hot. He said it gets up to 110 a couple weeks in the summer, and that's it. He said it's really nice, and there's lots of trees here. Uh, they look like eucalyptus trees. I'm not sure if that's what they are. I've never seen eucalyptus in the desert, but there'd be plenty of shade, plenty of windbreak, and oh wow, hold everything. Okay, we're coming up on one of these giant large-scale art projects and from a distance i thought it was just like a sound or a lighting rig like at a concert but no look at this it's all shopping carts <laughs> this is friggin amazing okay uh, the caretaker said it's called continuous consumption because if you look at it well first of all it's all shopping carts so you're using that to consume stuff buy stuff but it's like loops and it's technically not continuous it's three circles joined together but how friggin cool I mean this guy went and got a bunch of old shopping carts look at this <laughs> and just kind of I guess welded them together holy moly that is truly exceptional uh, I can't remember if he said this piece actually was at the Burning Man festival or not but some of this other artwork definitely was at Burning Man we'll check that out in a minute Okay, here's another art piece, and this one definitely was at Burning Man. Uh, I think he said it was some kind of jellyfish when it was on the playa. Because you can see how this thing is built. It's just like a big kind of circular dome made of all these metal circles. And each one of these circles, I guess at Burning Man, had a beautiful glass bowl set in it. You can see most of them are missing now. Well, unfortunately, that's because the caretaker told me people would come out here and just steal bowls off of this thing. He was kind enough to actually give me a bowl and he gave me one for my sister too. How cool is that? This guy is so nice. I think, well, it's because I asked him for permission when I saw him. I go, hey, would it be okay to shoot a video here on your property? And he said, sure, thanks for asking. Apparently an, another unnamed YouTuber was out here a while ago and didn't ask permission and well, that didn't go so well. But yeah, look, he gave me a bowl and then he gave one for my sister too. How cool is this one? This one's made out of the bottom of wine bottles. Isn't that neat? Man, how cool is it to be able to walk around this beautiful desert going from one weird art piece to another awesome art piece like this one. I think he said a female artist built this. Look at that, two hands holding a heart. <laughs> And then the pillars are made out of all these cool old rusty panels. And then look, a swing in the middle. You could sit here and swing. Let's swing. <sighs> wow, this is nice. Feels very sturdy. I know some of you watching this are probably like, well, I wouldn't get on that thing, chained to this rusty old wreck. But you have to understand something about these, these Burning Man artists. They don't mess around. I mean, look at this chain. That's a solid chain and very solidly connected to this bench. And for that matter, these pillars are all really securely driven in with rebar. Matter of fact, that uh, continuous consumption thing with all the shopping carts, he said they even climb up that. Like that thing is secure enough to climb on, I guess. I mean, I'm not saying to come out here and do all this, by the way, like this is private property and he, I'm only doing this because he let me. So uh, I certainly wouldn't want this to be taken as a, like, come on out here and climb around and all this stuff, no. But if they ever do reopen this place, which it sounds like they are going to, uh, that person that's in escrow or the, well, the organization that's in escrow to buy it, I won't say who, they're pretty cool uh, people and they have a very cool artistic vision I've actually heard of them before. And so if they buy this place, I'll bet you anything, it does get open to the public again. And well, you might be able to come out here and experience all this stuff for yourself, the legal and safe way. Okay, and here's another art piece. This looks like a, I guess it's a bat or a manta ray. You can't tell, I guess that's a manta ray. It's got that little stinger tail. <laughs> look at that. Wow, and it's made out of glass, I think. Isn't that what this is? Oh my gosh, look at this. Wow, that's beautiful. Oh, I wish you could feel it. It's real bumpy, bubbly. Feels amazing. Holy moly. And then I guess there was bubbles on and this one unfortunately broke. Someone probably threw a rock at it. 
Wow. Man, I can't believe this place isn't one of the top tourist destinations in Nevada. This is epic out here. I mean, gosh, these wide blue skies, this beautiful open desert, peace and quiet. Well, <laughs> except for when the railroad comes through, because those are still operational railroad tracks. But aside from the railroad, oh my God, it's super quiet. So it'd be an amazing place for a retreat, just a weekend getaway, festivals, concerts. Oh, okay, here's what I think is the coolest piece of artwork out here. It's a UFO beetle. Look at that. It was an old Volkswagen beetle that the artist turned into a UFO. How about that? <laughs> Put a little acrylic dome on top. And then, oh wow, look at the upholstery, my word. I wonder if this thing actually drove around that sticker there, BRC, that's Burning Man, uh, Black Rock City. Oh my God, look at that travel poster on the inside. See outer space. First up, the moon. It's not just an airless desert anymore. It's an airless desert with theme parks and concession stands. Oh man, that's what I love about Burning Man. I know a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about Burning Man, but that kind of humor, I love it. And look, it was called Space Bug. I feel like I almost maybe did see this up there once driving around the desert. That's why I was wondering if it actually still has wheels. Oh, it does. So you, it probably still does drive. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine anything cooler than cruising around town in this UFO beetle <laughs> space bug? Okay, wow. Well, I could wander around looking at this weird Burning Man art all day long, but well, there's plenty more to check out in Nipton. So let me go get my bowls and put them in my car and go poke around some more. Okay, so that was where all that weird artwork is and where the little cabins and the teepees and stuff are. Now let's go back over here into this grove of, well, they really do look like eucalyptus trees. I don't know. I'm not a tree person, you tell me. Anyway, uh, back over here by the hotel, look at this. Really cool communal fire pit with a giant Jenga set. You could sit around the fire and play Jenga. <laughs> Remember Jenga? He had to try to pull a piece out without knocking the whole tower over. Uh -huh. I was never very good at it anyways. But it sure would be fun to sit around a big fire pit here and play Jenga. Look at these giant, these benches. I don't even know what those are made out of, but some giant piece of construction debris. And all that's just sitting right out here in front of the old Hotel California, which well, I guess we can go peek in the windows of that too, might as well. I mean, look at this cool old historic hotel old stucco building, those really old timey windows. Unfortunately, the curtains are all drawn so we can't see inside any of the rooms, but gosh, it can't be a very big hotel. Maybe just five or six rooms. Oh, here, look, this one's open. Oh yeah, just hotel rooms, cozy. Well, you know what they say though about the Hotel California. You can check out anytime you want but you can never leave. Cute little hotel and I hope they reopen it soon. Okay, now let's check out over here. This was the Whistle Stop Cafe and Saloon. Obviously it's closed now because they're between owners. And then look out in front of it. It's one of those really cool signposts that tells you how many miles it is to all these different far flung cities of the world. There at the bottom it says Cartagena, 5,862 miles. Oh, 5,551 miles to Tokyo. Reykjavik, oh, only 4,142. Practically next door. Okay, let's see what's going on over at the old trading post. Unfortunately, it says it's closed, but I've been in here before when it was open and it was just a really cool little funky side of the road store. And he did say I could go shoot around the ground, so I'm just gonna go past that rope there. Wow, look at this cool old sign though. Made out of old mining timbers, it looks like. Really old building. I mean, look at this building's got to be from, well, I don't remember what that sign said, but 1910 or something. Far out. Maybe we can kind of peek through the window. Oh, it just looks like an empty store. Not too exciting. Okay, so basically, I guess you would call this downtown Nipton. The hotel, the cafe, the store, that eco campground, all the art museum stuff. But then what about the back streets of Nipton? Well, first let's go poke around the industrial part of Nipton. And by that, I mean the old railroad depot. This is probably the same building or at least the same foundation from 1905. 
Wow, imagine those old-timey trains coming through here, stopping at the old station house, uh, loading up cattle, unloading whatever supplies. I guess they probably brought in the supplies for the trading post here. Golly, can you imagine what it was like? It was probably a big event back then when the train stopped. The train came in. Okay, now let's walk back into town from the industrial zone and see what else is going on in Nipton. Okay, poking down the side of the building behind the general store. I remember I came here like five or 10 years ago and there was a laundromat. Oh yeah, look, it's still here. Look at this. They have their own little tiny laundromat. <laughs> couple washers, couple dryers. What more do you need? Oh, and then there's like a community bulletin board tells you what's going on in the area. There's some stuff uh, about the Mojave National Preserve, desert hiking tips, desert driving tips, and good advice. Words of wisdom. Oh, look, and even some reading material where you're sitting around waiting for your laundry. You could read American Hunter. You could read North American Whitetail. You could read, oh, look at this one. Bow Hunter. Or the ever popular guns and ammo. When I was here before, they had a bunch of old paperbacks, like a whole lending library, but, well, like I said, that was like five, maybe even 10 years ago, I came out here with a friend of mine. Oh, look at this. Look at the doorstop. In gold, we trust. All right, so that was the laundromat. Uh, back here's where the guy was selling honey, but I'm almost positive that's closed now, but we'll go poke our nose in there anyway. Okay, this looks like one of those old Wild West fake storefronts with a fake sidewalk, but I'm pretty sure it's real. I mean, this is, this town was founded in 1905. It was a wild west town. Look, here's the old outhouses. <laughs> Santa Claus. Oh, and then here's where the guy was selling honey. Oh man. Oh, it looks like it was a little store too. Like snacks in there. Man, everything's just, it's a bummer. Everything's closed. See, here's the sign. It was called Ray's Honey. Oh, far out. Look at this car. All right, car guys, what is it? Uh, isn't that a Lincoln emblem on the hood? Yeah, Lincoln Continental. Oh, stop, look at this Mark IV Lincoln Continental. I mean, you might not be crazy about the paint job and you might not be too crazy about the upholstery, but other than that, the thing's in pretty good shape. I mean, look at those fins, look at that chrome, wow. Looks like it came all the way from the land of enchantment, New Mexico. I'm a huge fan of New Mexico, but I think the term land of enchantment could just as easily be applied to the Mojave Desert, man. There is so much awesome stuff out here uh, like this. Okay, so back here is where there's actually people living in these trailers. So I don't want to go, you know, poking around in people's private homes. You know what I mean? That would just be rude. Uh, but I guess that's like... I guess there's miners who work out here in the uh, work work in the middle of the Mojave Preserve. So I guess you can still mine or prospect in the Mojave Preserve. I don't know, man. That's a trip that there's actually people living out here though. But rather than poke around in their private business, let's just check out this old historic. Uh, looks like it was maybe a schoolhouse. This must have been the school. Wow. Oh, it's all locked up now. Bummer. Maybe we can look in the window. Oh wow! Yeah, look. Really cool old schoolhouse building. Oh my goodness. This would be the place to buy and turn into something cool. Oh, I got real nice high ceilings. Okay, so that's basically like the residential part of Nipton on the left side of the highway. And then on the right side of the highway, that's downtown Nipton. Well, up here, I happen to notice, look at this. It says California Desert Information Outpost. Looks like this used to be some kind of little museum where you could get, I guess, info about the Mojave Preserve. It doesn't look like it's open anymore. Oh, wow, I bet that was a fun place to go. Still looks like it'd be a fun place to go. Dang, I really hope they do juice this town back up like this. These people that are supposedly in escrow to buy it. Hopefully it doesn't fall through because there's so much potential in this amazing town. The caretaker was telling me the lady who owns it, she lives in Laguna Beach, California, nowhere near here. So this guy that she hired as her caretaker, he just gets to live out here in this amazing ghost town by himself. And the only people he has to deal with are 
yahoos like me who come through asking if they can shoot videos for their YouTube channel. Look at this. Haberdashery. I can't imagine there was a haberdashery there <laughs> or there. Okay, here's one final cool thing about Nipton, and that is the view. Look at that. It's the Ivanpah Solar Power Plant where I just made a video a few weeks ago. <laughs> you can see it clear as day from your front porch right here in magical Nipton, California. How about those million dollar views? Well, that's pretty much all there is to Nipton, California. Definitely worth a stop if you happen to be passing through. I mean, yeah, none of the store, restaurant, none of that stuff's open, but uh, it's still fun to get out and walk around, stretch your legs, look at some of the weird cars, you know, read the historical markers. And then hopefully one day soon in the not too distant future, somebody with a grand vision will buy this place and transform it into the badass funky desert outpost art colony weirdo hotspot that it sorely deserves to be. Sorry the town's not for sale anymore, but well, hope you enjoyed watching anyway.